Hey and welcome to Wednesday Flight School number two in the series that we're doing on how to fly a aircraft well as properly as possible anyway. If you're not sure and if you're not aware I am a real world pilot though it has been a little while since I've done any real world flying but I thought I would bring my experiences from that to you and I'm also going to because I've had a few people questioning me how could that ever happen. Um, I, I will actually link some QFI uh, videos at the end so if you have any questions about what I've said during the videos then um, you can go and re-qualify that with a, a proper CFI because uh, those videos are available. They're really good too so um, I'm going to be doing that probably with most of the videos I make. So what are we talking about today? Today I want to talk about the wind. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in X-Plane 11, props, jets and much more, all done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave me a comment, look forward to hearing from you. Yep, the wind. And last week, or the first one in the series, we just went for a bit of a general flight around. Okay, We didn't do anything too specific, really, other than have a quick look. So what I want to do today is talk about taxiing again, specifically. But today, we've actually got wind. And if you can have a look here, you'll notice this is not sitting at zero. That is because we have about a nine knot headwind from uh, 049 so over this way and it's coming from our right forward to our left rear so it's coming across us so if we're going to uh, be taxiing around with any sort of crosswinds then we need to make some some okay, uh, some control inputs for those so um, what is that so let's go have a talk about what we need to do quickly uh, and I'll try and make this as quick as I can you know uh, as quickly as we can. We'll get everything already turned on here. So, if the wind is coming from our right front, we don't really need to make any particular elevator changes, which does change when it's from behind us. But what we do need to do is turn into the wind. Okay, so the wind's coming from the right. We need to maintain a right turn just like that. When it's coming from behind us, and it'll be over our left shoulder, we actually need to make a continue to make a right but we need to push forward so if you you turn into the wind when it's coming from ahead of you and you turn away from it when it's behind okay so let's make that as simple as possible as we go we'll take the handbrakes off and uh, my rudders are working isn't that wonderful because they don't often they sometimes they turn off and we'll turn around and we will do a uh, turn and we'll taxi backtrack on two three okay we're going to backtrack which means we're going back against the direction that we are going to take off I'm going to forego some of the other little bits and pieces the engine run-ups and stuff just so we save a bit of time because you know we looked at that a little bit last week and when we do some uh, more full full-on flights then we'll do everything step by step so let's have, come down here and we'll have a little look right and around the pattern and down to make sure everything's clear and we would normally stop and do our engine run up here but I'm gonna just whiz past that that for today I hope you don't mind me doing that but you know that we're supposed to do it we check the runway and we're going to stay on our run up pads here at Gawler we have these takeoff pads um, and these are really there to save the wooden propellers that are on the jabaroos that I fly here we have 170s, one, we did have 160s, actually I really enjoyed the 160s, the wing wasn't quite as uh, training like shall we say, and its roll rate was a little bit better so you could actually roll it around a little bit better. Um, but the 170 has a nice thick wing which is really fantastic for training, um, its stall characteristics, characteristics are uh, pretty good and uh, just very gentle. It's a bit slow rolling though, it's a bit of a ah uh, to get it to go around the corner, but it ain't bad, it ain't bad. But for what it's supposed to do, and that's to train new people, um, it does a really fantastic job. The other aircraft we do have here, we have a Savannah 
uh, last time I looked, which is um, what happens is if people own an aircraft that is factory built, they must be factory built for doing flight training, um, then they can rent it to the club, so the club pay them a, an amount for the hire of that aircraft. So that's out there. I haven't flown one of those, I've only flown the Jabiroos here. Uh, I did do a little bit of flight train down at uh, Hartwick Air, down at uh, Parafield. Great people down there. And uh, I flew the DAE-20 down there, which was a pretty sleek little low wing. But uh, you know what it's like, don't we people? You go out and buy a house and then um, those excess funds dry up pretty quick. So that was the end of that. So oh, Now all the way down here, I haven't talked about what I was supposed to be talking about. So when we're taxiing down this way, I really should have my forward stick. My stick forward and to the right. That's where I should have had it. It's a light tailwind, so it's not so bad, but that's where I should have been. So let's turn around. And uh, we'll come back onto the takeoff strip again. And so taxiing, taxiing forward, we should maintain a right and we should just main neut neutral sticks fine okay so I, f I failed in that first little bit of the lesson didn't I guys so okay so it is winds coming from front right at the moment uh, probably straight over the top of the uh, the compass there so it's it's not a big crosswind nine knots so as we take off we're going to maintain full right as we get a little bit faster and what the full right does is stops the wind pushing us across we keep ourselves laterally straight with that but if we don't have the right wing then we'll tend to move left anyway especially as we start to come uh, off the ground but as we get a bit faster and we get a little bit more uh, authority out because we have more air going over the wings then we can just ease that off as we go um, and you'll see that if you watch enough airliners or you watch um, uh, is it Baron Pilot or uh, Mr. Aviation 101 and things like that? You will see them doing exactly this if you go and watch them in real life, okay? So we don't need flaps. Everything else is all right. The brakes is already off. The trim is in the right place. We have fuel. We have everything in the green. Engine instruments, vacuum. Our engine instruments and EGTs that will come up as we start to move. You can see that we do have a little bit of headwind here. We've got a headwind component and uh, so we're good so let's start the roll let's have our ailerons to the right try and do that i'm doing this one-handed using my rudders to keep me straight down the runway a bit more power a bit more power a bit more and full power okay we're coming up through 40 knots 50 knots 60 knots and rotating and once you're off then you can remove that aileron input but you need it on the way in okay so what we're going to do is climb out at uh, vy it's best climb speed which is around about the 76 knots which so we can put the nose down we got 500 or so feet per minute a little bit more power just to maintain it at five check where we are already turned too far now just do a gentle turn here this is where people kill themselves Okay, we've overdone that because I was too busy talking to you guys. Um, and it is a common fact, common fault. What you do not do is turn right tightly, put it yourself into a tight angle of bank, and then use the rudders to try and kick yourself around. You will die if you do that. Okay, um, I'm very fortunate because I can remember a couple of times where I did it until I realized how dangerous it was. So get ourselves back in. We've got plenty of time to get ourselves lined up. Now the aircraft will probably just point a little bit to the right into the wind, which is quite fine. So what we're going to do here with this time when we come in, we're going to just fly in normally. I'm going to lift the nose, drop the speed back a little bit. I want to be 70 as I come over the end. 500 feet is okay. Nose up a little bit, a little bit of back trim, I think. Second stage of flap, get that in. I'm a little late on that again. Okay, 
we're coming back here. We're at 65 as we're coming over. Good. You can see that we are pointing towards the wind, which is coming just from the right. So what we need to do, because it's not too strong, it's not bad. I'm going to wait in this instance until we're just to the ground. Now I'm going to change my point of view to the end of the runway. And I'm just going to push a little rudder just to straighten me up and we hit both down. Now I'm going to put right aileron in. I'm going to put the rudders, the flaps back up. Just give it a moment to settle. Power back in, but right aileron because of the right wind. Steer with your feet. 40 knots, everything is green, fuel's good. 60 knots climbing up and neutralize that aileron input. Climb out at 76 knots. Now the next time we go around, we're going to do something a little bit uh, a little bit different. Because there's a couple of schools of thought, and none of them are particularly wrong or right. Well, they're both right because they both work. Okay, trim ourselves up here for the 76 knots. And we'll let ourselves climb up to the 500 feet AGL above ground level. We'll check right. Now make sure you do check around. I probably need a camera looking back uh, a little bit right and left over my shoulder. Yeah, with my uh, few frame drops there, sorry. So let's turn right. Call the traffic. Cessna 172 turning final for runway 23 caller. And gentle turns, guys, as I say. We're a little bit on the high side, probably a little close. Bring the power back. We're going to be going to make it. So flaps down, trim. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow it to come around. Now, what we're going to do here, different from the last one, is I'm going to use my rudders to make the aircraft point where I want it to go. And I'm going to use a little bit of right aileron. And you've got to do this in balance. So it's, it's only a light wind, so it doesn't need to be much. The aileron input stops us from drifting and the rudder points us down the runway so that we land. Now we want to land really on the right wheel. Okay, this is looking pretty nice, but you've got to remember to cake it all off as you touch down, otherwise you'll be skewing around the place. Ready? There we go. Touch down, neutralize the rudder, a little bit of left rudder to cave, stay straight. Brakes on and that'll do us. Now, let's go back to the parts that I missed when we talked about taxiing. So let's taxi up here. Let's do the power. So we'll taxi back. Up here. So the wind's coming from the right, so we have ailerons to the right, and we can have the rudder reasonably neutral. If you pull it back, then you're applying pressure down on the tail, and uh, you you possibly could lift the nose if it was a really strong you got a gust if you got it um, pushing forward then you're putting a lot of extra pressure on the nose wheel and the nose wheels are strong but they're not that strong so you have to be courteous with them let's taxi up so as we turn left to go back into the hangars here we're going to have a tailwind so if we have a left tailwind what do we do quickly we dive away from the wing so we have forward pressure and a left turn we're trying to turn away from the wind which is coming from our right yeah we turn into it when it's coming towards us and we turn away from it when it's behind us so we're ready to turn on the rudders just gently going around so now we need to change from our right right aileron to left aileron and full forward is where we need to go and continue to steer again it's not so bad today because I've only got a light wind selected but we'll do this again and I will add uh, a lot more wind and make it a lot more difficult but today at least you've had a good look at how to go about doing it so I hope that's been helpful because I don't see anybody in the sim world really um, do this at all and if it's part of flying whether you're in an airliner with you're in something small in GA now we're right turn and we're brakes. So there we go. There's uh, two circuits. 
and I'll just quickly revise on what we did. So let's just um, look down here and uh, we'll just do that. I'm, I've been flying the Robin so often that uh, I was looking to go down for the handbrake. There's the handbrake, okay. So again, if the wind's coming from the front to the right, we turn our controls into it and we use our rudders to maintain our directional stability where we're going but the rudder that right aileron will stop the wind tipping the aeroplane over if you get a really big gust and if the wind's coming from the right and it's behind us so it's coming from over the right shoulder as you're looking at your screen it'll be left and forward yeah left and forward so let me use this one okay left and forward oh that doesn't look so good does it so left and forward if you uh, have the wind behind you and right and if it's right and forward into it and ailerons uh, elevators neutral okay hope that's been really helpful thank you for staying with me next week we'll have something equally interesting and maybe more we'll see where we get to for that one so if you're new here and you enjoyed what we did today please hit that subscribe button for me and guys, hit those likes. We'd love to see some likes come up. Don't seem to see too many of those. That would be really fantastic. It helps me so much if you do do that. And until next week, I will see you again here on Let's Fly VFR. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.